Good evening, everyone. Um, I am Bangalter, um, Technical Events Coordinator for Civil Engineering Sectional Committee. And today is the 10th lecture of our lecture series on hybrid multi story design, the structural design of hybrid multi story buildings using Europods. And today, the top, uh, today we are having the second lecture on fracture shear and torsion shear. And I would like to appreciate uh, Professor Tishan Jay Singh's so commitment in conducting this lecture series. Actually, even from uh, university students, we have uh, we are receiving uh, many positive feedbacks about this lecture series. So thank you very much, sir. And um, over to you, sir. Okay, Bandukar, thank you very much. Uh, just give me one minute until I get the notes loaded. Okay, sir. First, I'll share the note, Mandukha. Okay. You all can see it? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Right, so uh, last time we talked about torsion. And... Uh, We talked only the very basic stuff, like, you know, how to find whether a section can take uh, torsion and so on. But today we are going to find the reinforcement requirement. So I told you that, you know, torsion consists of two parts. One is uh, equilibrium torsion. The other one is compatibility torsion. So this equilibrium torsion, you must provide reinforcement to resist it. When you have compatibility torsion, you know, you can uh, ignore torsion by going for a torsionless system. So in the case of bridge design, we use this torsionless system a lot. But in case of buildings, especially places like transfer plates, transfer beams, you have to be concerned about equilibrium torsion. And I showed with examples with uh, rigid arms how to find the torsional moment on a beam when you are creating a model. So then we also looked at torsional shear. So torsional shear will cause diagonal tracks right round. So they are they can 
make the beam to fail. So if there's a beam subjected to torsion, we must provide the reinforcement. The reinforcement will consist of additional longitudinal bars and additional longitudinal bars and uh, links. And I showed the shape of the link as well. Right. Now we will look at this particular situation and we will also look at this particular equation. Particular equation. QI is torsion or shear stress multiplied by thickness. Q. And Q is the torsion or shear that is flowing around it. So we have an equation where AK is the area surrounded by the center line, AK. So first we look at how to prove this equation. So this, uh, this, this equation is used a lot when you are finding the reinforcement. So you can just have a quick look. And uh, that is Q is equal to capital T divided by 2 AK. And I'm going to refer a diagram like this. So let's look at it. And this is how the she torsional shear flows. And you can see torsional moment is tau, TED, and uh, the area surrounded by this particular center line is AK. And Q is equal to TED over 2 AK. That is the equation we are going to prove. And these are extract from uh, the code. So code gives this dot diagram. And if I try to use the a diagram that is available on the note before I move on to the white sheet. Here you are. This is how the torsion and shear flows. Because uh, can you remember last time? Manduk, I hope you can remember. We said when you are designing a rectangular yes. section, we design it as a hollow section and yes, then provide the reinforcement requirement, right? Yes. And yes, also, sir. if you look at uh, the shape of the link, can you remember this shape I, I have drawn and shown you? Yes, sir. We did that. We need a torsional link, right? So, so any section subject to torsion, we need torsional link. Then, then uh, you have to look at this particular diagram and you can see how the torsional shear occurs. Right? So, it goes right round. And uh, in torsional shear also, tension will be taken by steel. Compression will be taken by concrete. So, uh, to determine the longitudinal forces, we have to consider the whole perimeter. Whereas, uh, to determine the, the vertical links, we consider one side. So, I'll come back, to, come to that a little later. And this is the equation we are trying to T is equal to AKQ. And if you look at this diagram, just have a good look at this diagram because I'm going to draw it again. And I'm going to find the, uh, you know, this, I'm going to show you how to prove this equation. Right? So the equation is this one. T is equal to AK times Q. Or Q is equal to T over 2 AK. So just have a quick, good look at this particular data. Now I'm going to stop share. And I'm going to move to the white sheet. So basically what we have is this diagram.
this is the diagram and this is the center line Roshana shear stress is tau i and this is uniform thickness so ti tau i ti is equal to q in kilonewtons per meter in kilonewtons per meter or newtons per millimeter then torsional moment t is equal to torsional force multiplied by lever arm sigma and torsional force on this phase is equal to tau i sorry q times q and if this is a a1 this is b1 center lines a1 b1 q times b1 but q1 times b1 is a force this way. and it has to be multiplied by a1 plus moment is equal to force multiplied by lever arm plus q times if you take this phase a1 multiplied by b1 so that is 2q a1 b1 a1 b1 is ak so t is equal to 2q ak is that clear bandhuko yes sir that is clear so that's a simple equation that is applicable right. now we look at uh, the code provisions so i'll start sharing and here you can see the euro code we have to go to section six because we are designing go to six So this is the code. This is all about punches here. Okay. Now here you get torsion and shear. So if you look at torsion in the code, it's a very small section. And this is the equation that we have just proved. Then it gives this diagram, which uh, tells about the shear force on a wall. Then it gives this particular equation. It gives this particular equation, which says. The longitudinal reinforcement, the total longitudinal reinforcement requirement is a function of the torsional moment applied, 2AK and UK. UK is the perimeter of the member. UK is the perimeter of the member. And uh, that's all. So it tells us about uh, how to find the longitudinal reinforcement, but it doesn't give an equation for how to find the shear uh, link requirement. But uh, I'm going to show you how to find that. So it gives this equation, which says sigma ASL FYD over UK is equal to TED over 2AK 
hot theta. So that is the only equation given 628. Then it gives another equation. 629. Can you remember last time we 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 used this equation to see whether yes, the torsion is excessive or not? Because uh, there's no point in finding torsion and reinforcement if torsion is excessive. Right? So So we use that equation and TRD max is given by this equation. Again, uh, we sorted it out. And VRD max, I showed you that, that uh, there's an equation given under direct shear. VD is the actual shear. To TED is the actual torsion. So we got an answer of 0.92. Then we said, okay, that, that particular section is okay because the torsion moment is only 22, 24 kilonewton meters. That's all. And it ends here. And this is this equation is valid. Just to see whether torsion and reinforcement is needed. I mean, uh, if this equation is satisfied, you don't need any reinforcement. But uh, generally, we don't have any section without shear links. So this, but, but what this basically says is, if the torsion is very small, no need to provide torsion and shear, torsion and shear reinforcement. So then basically, uh, you know, most of the structures, when you analyze three-dimensionally, the torsional moment is close to zero. So if the torsional moment is close to zero, you don't need special treatment for torsion. So that's, that's the meaning of this particular equation. And, and our usual practice is we don't worry about torsion. We simply worry only about shear, direct shear, not torsional shear. But if the torsional moment is there, as for the equilibrium torsion, then we have to worry about this equation. So this equation we never use, but we use the the the, the fundamental behind the, this one. Fundamental is if the torsion is small, don't worry. That's what this is. Because if this value is very small, then you don't have to worry. On the other hand, what it says, says in another words is if torsion is all close to zero, only direction is available, try make sure the section can resist direct shear. But on the other hand, if there's torsion, if there's direct shear, then it must fulfill this condition. So the equation that is used is 629. We generally don't do 631. 631 is a fundamental condition that is given. And so the two equations that we use are 629 and 630. And we'll be using 628 as well. So only there are three equations that we can use. This equation is to find the longitudinal reinforcement. These two equations to find the find whether the section is adequate. And if it is a rectangular section, section is not adequate. Don't increase the depth because you are not going to gain much. Always increase the width because we know square sections are far better than rectangular sections when it comes to shear. Is that clear, Bandhuga? Yes, sir. That is clear. That is good, right? Okay. So, now we have this equation. Right? And that is equation 628. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, we'll just look at the proof that is given in uh, Moseley and Banji book. So, I will uh, share the note. Share the screen, torsion. So we have to do two, two equations. One is this one, where we have the diagonal uh, torsion, the, 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 the longitudinal reinforcement. The other one is vertical reinforcement. So 
we now look at the fall perimeter. What is the perimeter? Perimeter is UK. And if you look at uh, UK, we just look at the equation, the example. The wall width is uh, 100. T effective is 100 millimeters. This is the example we did last time. The area underneath is this. And what is UK? UK is the perimeter of central line. UK is the perimeter of the central line. So that is 2B1 plus 2A1 or otherwise B plus H minus 2T effective multiplied by 2. B plus H is the actual dimensions. B plus H minus 100 this way minus 100 this way sorry b plus h the equation is written as b plus b minus t effective plus uh, it is not plus actually it is uh, b plus h b minus tf multiplied by oh sorry plus s because we are looking at the perimeter b minus tf plus h minus t effective multiplied by 2 is true. That's correct. So that is, uh, you know, this plus this plus this plus this. So 1400. So that is the center line. <clears throat> then what we do is we look at this diagram and the torsional shear will give us shear stress of force of Q times UK and there's a force triangle as you can see here and this is Q times UK this is Q times UK divided by sine theta and then cos theta will give you Q times UK or tan theta as the horizontal force so who will resist this horizontal force so we have this equation, Q times UK, UK divided by tan theta as the horizontal force. And Q means T over 2AK times UK over tan theta. And that force is resisted by... <coughs> That force is resisted by the reinforcement, the horizontal reinforcement. That is ASL, F, Y, L, K, divided by 1.15. And so you'll see it gives ASL, F, Y, D, O, U, K, equals T, E, D, over 2, A, K. Right. So I'm going to just going to show you the uh, the code equation, and the code equation is uh, given as. I'll just stop share. This is the code equation. I copied the co equation given in code equation six twenty eight, and the horizontal component is Q U K O tan theta. And Q is two over T over two AK. You can substitute there. UK over tan theta. And that is the force that is that has to be resisted by horizontal reinforcement. So this part is FYD. This is FYD. So ASL FYD. And here UK can be brought here. Is equal to D E D. Or 2 AK, this AK, and 1 over tan theta means cot theta. So, this is the equation given in the code. And this is the equation that we are going to use. Right? So, the equation that we are going to use is 
TO A cell F Y L K O 1.15 equals T E D 2 A K U K over tan this equation. Right. And what you are looking for is a cell, longitudinal reinforcement, longitudinal reinforcement, additional longitudinal reinforcement. Okay, so what you get is if I start sharing the knot. And if I look at this, this is ASL is equal to TED UK cot theta divided by 2AK 0.87 FY LK. So the equation is ASL is equal to TED UK cot theta divided by 2AK times 0 0.87 times F Y L and if you if I stop share you can look at the white sheet. Now this is the equation that I have written from earlier one and ASL is equal to T E D U K 1 over tan theta is cot theta 2 A K FILK divided by 1.15 is 0.87 FIL. So, this is the equation that we need to find the longitudinal reinforcement. This is the exact equation that is given in the code. So, that equation is no problem. So, the only thing is, this is a different version of the same 628. Equation 628 is this one. But a different version because equation 628 given in the code is FYD over UK equals TED 2AK cot theta. So here UAK comes here. FYD goes there as 0.87 FYD. Is that clear, Vanduka? Yes, that is clear. Sir. Yeah. So basically, there is no problem. The, the same equation, right? Equation is the same, uh, and it is given in the code. Now let's see how we deal with how we deal with the next one. That is the vertical. So for the vertical links, so for the vertical links, the proof is there. Just one moment. Right. Okay. So for the vertical links, so we'll uh, you can just look at this particular equation because I'm going to show you how we get there. So, if you look at this diagram now, here you can see this h cot theta. Over h cot theta, what is the what is the force? Vertical force. Over this distance, the 
vertical force is QH. And if you are providing some reinforcement, the reinforcement should resist this QH. The reinforcement should resist this QH. Right? So if you are providing one reinforcement, it should resist this QH, but we may have number of reinforcement at S space, spacing S. So because of that, we can uh, we can actually get rid of this H in the equation. We can replace H with HS, so you can look at this one. So it says the vertical force is equal to force in steel divided by 1.15 is equal to Q times H. But if you are going to have links at a closer spacing than H cot theta, then the the force will be SO H cot theta. So this H and H will cancel out. Then you will find SWFY K O 1.15 is equal to Q times Q times S over cot theta, but Q is equal to T D over 2 A K. So from that you can get this equation. So the equation is SW FYK O 1.15 is equal to Q times S over cot theta and uh, the final equation we are looking for is ASW over S is equal to TED over 2 AK 0.87 FYK cot theta. So I will stop share now. So we have this equation. And you have to see how to get this from this. So we get ASW or FYK and into 0.87 is equal to Q is TED over 2 AK S times cot theta. So this S can be brought here and this can go this way. So you get this equation. So that equation is not given in the code, but it's given in textbooks. So we will be using this equation. So that's why I said the solution for torsional design is Excel spreadsheet. Because all the equations are not given in the code. So we are using some equations from textbooks. It's a long procedure. So the idea thing is because we are we are when the procedures are long, we can easily make mistakes. So the ideal way to prevent any mistakes in torsional calculations that you often don't do, that is also another problem. If you are doing even if it's a complicated calculation, we are doing it very often, then it's not a problem. But this is not a calculation that we don't that would that we would need. We need it only once in a while. So what is the best solution? Best solution is first understand the go through the example given and write a small computer program on a spreadsheet with all the conditions in so that you can calculate the torsional shear uh, link requirement easily with uh, additional longitudinal reinforcement. Is that clear, Bandhuga? Yes, sir. That is clear. Right? Okay. So what we are going to do now is we'll go back to the design example. So this design example, the theory is covered in a number of steps. Right. So that is the theory part. So shall you have a look, quick look at the design example right from the beginning? Because now we know all the equations, Bandhuga. Yes, sir. That's better, sir. Good, good. That's better. Is that right? Yes. Like, you know, because uh, some may not remember the whole thing. Yes. So the design example is a beam of 300 and 
600 depth, 300 width, 540 effective depth. Now, in this particular beam was originally designed to carry a vertical load of 108 kilonewtons per meter. So, that design was done without worrying about torsion. Then they found okay, this particular beam can be subjected to torsion as well. If that is the case, what are we going to do? Okay, we have to provide torsion and resistance. How to see whether this torsion can be taken? The first step is convert this rectangular section to a form that we can use in calculations. So, for that, the guideline is given in the code which says the which says the effective thickness is a divided area of the section divided by the perimeter divided by the perimeter right? effective thickness is area divided by perimeter area is 600 by 300 perimeter is 900 900 here, 1800. So you can see it is 900 into 2800, 600 by 300, 100 meters. So that is the effective thickness. That is clear. Is that right? Yes, that is clear. Yeah, right. Then, then we need another par parameter that is the center line AK area. That area is 200 multiplied by 500. 200 multiplied by 500. See here? 200 multiplied by 500. Then we need this perimeter. That perimeter is 200 plus 200 plus 500 plus 500, 1400. So that is also 1400. So those are the important parameters that we need to solve a problem. So now we have all the parameters that we need to solve this particular problem. Now, when you are designing, you know, for convenience, it was considered as simply supported. Right? So the first part of the design will be finding the bending, the, the reinforcement, and then finding the shear, shear requirement, and then they found that the strut angle is 20 degrees. So the shear fade is going to be at 22 degrees. So this is a shear design. So the, the maximum shear is on the section is 308 kilonewtons. And the maximum shear resistance is 530 at an angle of 22. Because we did examples, so I'm sure you can re recall it. And uh, this is the first part of the design where the beam has been designed for flexure and beam has been designed for shear. And we know the amount of shear link required and the shear link requirement is given as ASWS is 0.475. Just keep it in mind because that's, a, that's an important information uh, that we can use later. Now we are going to do the torsion and design. Now what is the first thing in torsion and design? Make sure the torsion is not substantial so that this small section can resist it. Although this 600 by 3 is a significantly large beam. For torsion, it's not a large beam. Why? For torsion, it, it's a rectangular beam. So it's not a large beam. On one side, it has only 300. For something to be torsionally large, it has to be something like 400 by 600, or 500 by 600, or 600 by 600. And those are large. But this particular section is not a large section as long as, as far as torsion is concerned. For torsion, it's not a large section. But for bending, it is a large section. So, for example, uh, you know, even as singly reinforced. 
600 by 300 beam carry, can carry about 500 uh, kilonewton meters. It's a substantial movement. But when it comes to motion, it is it can barely carry 24. Because you can see when this uh, condition was checked, we came pretty close to one, the limiting value. So what you have to keep in mind is this section is very weak because it's a rectangular section. But if this, if when we do this check, if it fails, don't increase the depth. That is not going to help you. You must increase the width of the section. Move from rectangular to square, then you'll be through. Is that clear one, Dukhra? Yes, sir. Yes, that's clear, sir. That's clear, right? So, we have, we have to check it. At DRD max, this equation is given. And uh, new also 0.528, that's the equation given in the code. So, last time we calculated TRD max and we got the value close to 73. And so, this is 24 divided by 73. This value was also calculated. That is 308 is the value and maximum is 530. Can you remember I showed you those values earlier? VD is 308. VRD max is 530. This is a calculated value. And uh, can you, if you look at this one, you can clearly see. This maximum shear on the face of the uh, fourth face of the column is 308. And shear capacity is uh, 530. To calculate VRD max, this equation given in the code. And we have calculated that, that value for an angle of 22. Now, why this angle of 22 is important? That means shear failure is going to happen at 22 degrees. Then torsional failure will also happen at 22 degrees. So, when you are substituting for theta, you can now substitute 22. Because everywhere you get theta. Right. Now, this is the theory part that we just discussed. And first we calculate the additional links. ASWOS is equal to TED over 2AK 0.87 cot theta. Cot theta is cot 22. Cot 22 means 1 over 10, 22. And 1 over 10, 22 is 2.5. You can just check it. Can you just check 1 over 10, 22? What is the value of Banduga? 1 over 10, 22? 2.475. Yeah. So we consider 2.47 as 2.5. Right? So, cot 22 is equal to 1 over 10, 22. And 1 over 10, 22 is 2.47. So we substitute it as 2.5. If I is 500. This 0.87 is the is a partial factor of safety. And we earlier found this area is 2 into uh, AK is 100 into 10 to the power 3. And just substitute. And torsional moment is 24 multiplied by 10 to the power 6. And you get ASWS as 0 0.110. Now you have to be careful. So I'm going to stop here to explain that. So now we have a section. And we are trying to see what's going on. So we have these links. So when shear, direct shear happens, so this will all go into tension. So we have two legs, but torsional shear occurs differently. It is going right round. So we cannot have two legs at once. Each leg should be considered separately. So that's why we consider only this leg. So this is ASWS is single leg. Here, ASWS represents both legs. 
Is that clear, Madhuka? Yes, sir. That is clear. So, this is one, this is two. Then you get the total link requirement will be S plus twice S W two divided by S. This is the total link requirement. Is that clear? Yes, yes. Right. Okay. So I'll go back to the screen. So what is the total shear link requirement? Will be 0.475 comes from the earlier one. Can you remember I showed you the shear link requirement that has been calculated as 0.475. See, the shear link requirement is SWOS is 0.475. And uh, in shear, there's an additional longitudinal force that is 385. So this is 4.475 plus 2 times 0 0.110, 0 0.695. So what are we going to do? We have to find ASW. So let's say if uh, we are providing 8 millimeter straps at 125 centers. So ASW is 50. 50 divided by 125. 0 0.805. Is that right? Uh, uh, AW is 50. 50, 50 divided, divided by 100. Yeah? 50, 50 divided by 125 is 0.4. 0.4. Yes. All right. So, so these for two legs, right? So 0.4 multiplied by 2, 0.805. Okay? Yes. Because, uh, because this has two legs. Yes. AWS is now representing the shear, shear link. Because it has two legs. So you have to multiply. This is not uh, 50 divided by S. This is 100 divided by S. Uh, area of 8 millimeter reinforcement is 50. But AWS is actually representing two legs. So that is 100 divided by 120. Can you see that? Yes. In shear links, what is ASWS? ASWS is a uh, area of both links, both legs, right? So we have to carefully do this. So that is, uh, if it is eight millimeter, each leg is fifty millimeter start. Two legs means hundred divided by hundred twenty five. Hundred divided by hundred twenty five is point uh, eight. So the spacing has to be hundred twenty five. And then there's another rule. There's another rule. What is that rule? That rule says if you are providing links, the maximum spacing of link should be less than UK divided by 8. What is UK? 1400 divided by 8. And to UK is, can you remember UK? UK means 1400 and UK means addition of this length perimeter, center line perimeter on the, on the center line, on the center line, right? So you get 1400 divided by 8. This also has should be checked. 1000, so that is. 1400 divided by 8. What is the value? 175. Sir. Yeah, 175. So, the link spacing should be less than 170. There's an upper limit. The upper limit is equal to that uh, center line length divided by 8. So, you have to keep in mind there's a maximum spacing for torsional links. Recommended maximum. Recommended maximum is UK divided by 8. 
Is that clear? Yes, sir. So now we have got the link spacing. Link spacing is T8, and then uh, you can check it at different other, other sections as well. Right. Then, because uh, this torsion is not going to. The, so generally, when you design for torsion, you had look at the bend, uh, torsional moment diagram on the structure that you have analyzed. If it's a transfer beam, you find uh, different sections have different torsional moments. So you have to uh, do the you repeat this design at number of sections and then decide what is the common thing you are going to adopt. Is that clear? Yes. Because yes. Uh, because uh, you know it's not uniform because most of the time torsional moments vary like bending moments. So you have to find the critical sections and check and come to a conclusion. This in this example it is not there because we we are we are just checking whether it can carry twenty four kilonewton meters torsional moment at the center. That's all we are doing. But in the actual situation, uh, from section to section you will get different torsional moments, so that has to be checked, and uh, the maximum should be found, and then uh, design check the condition less than one with the maximum torsional moment with maximum bending. Okay. Now we have to find the long, uh, longitudinal reinforcement. And I have shown you the equation. And it's based, based on UK. So 966. This additional longitudinal steel should be provided 4 by 6, it's 16 bars, 1200. One in each corner and one on each side faces as shown in 630 C. The additional longitudinal tensile force is 300. 85 resulting from the design for shear will be carried for by appropriate certain amount of reinforcement, uh, the main tensile resistance. So we just look at this diagram. This is a check to see whether 24 kilonewton meters of torsional moment can be carried. And if you look at the uh, figure, here you can see every corner, 16 millimeter bars, two additional bars here, two additional bars here. So, because it's subject to torsion, you have to provide additional bars right round. Why? Because this uh, track is going to propagate along the beam. So every possible place, we must provide longitudinal reinforcement and make sure the separation or the crack will not be uh, visible to the eyes. Just when you just look at it, we, crack is there, but not visible. To make sure the crack is there, but not visible, what we do is we provide all this extra reinforcement on the perimeter. Is that clear, Vanduka? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is another important thing that you have to consider, right? And, right. So that is uh, something that uh, is very important. Uh, only in the case of uh, transfer beams. Other places we simply ignore. We don't worry about it. But uh, if, the, if it occurs, then you must be careful. Why? If we start failing, there's nothing to stop it. Now, these days we all think, okay, something is failing, just wrap some uh, fiber and fiber, uh, FRP, fiber reinforced polymers, like carbon fiber. And uh, we can give a little push to the structure by increasing the moment carrying capacity of the but if the torsion failure occurs, it's a critical failure. It will continue to happen. So because of that reason, it's very, very important that we provide torsional loops and resist torsion. Okay, Vandupo? Yes, yes. Now, any questions on the chat? Mm -hmm. 
there's no questions. Okay. Now oh, then there's another important thing that you have to consider. Right. That is, I'll first explain it. Then we'll look at the code. Uh, now this also related to shear. Now let's say we uh, have a slab connected to the beam. What do, what do we do? Oh, there's a slab. In the span section, we say B is as a flange. Is that right? So if it is a flange beam, there will be some stresses here. And that means there can be some shear failure here. And how do you prevent the shear? You can prevent it by using double action. So what we do is we we'll make sure this reinforcement goes like this. The other reinforcement comes like this. In addition to all this, we will provide some additional reinforcement. Then, if that is the case, can you get some cracks here? You say, okay, I mean, the chances for cracking is very limited. Why? Because there's uh, plenty of reinforcement continuing across the section, and section will not have problem. But how do we check it? How to check it is not straightforward. Why? Because we have a bending moment diagram. And what it says is, get the bending moment diagram. So this is L by 4. This is L by 4. Now in this one, where do you get the maximum change in moment? Maximum change in moment, this pattern will occur in this portion. And Then we find how much force is actually carried in this one between these two points. And that difference in force is the one that caused this shear failure. This shear failure. Then what are you going to say? You can see whether the shear failure can occur. The shear failure can occur along a beam. Make sure you provide enough strength. So that is something that is available in, on the code. We have to make some provision. And fortunately, what happens is we provide top reinforcement, we provide bottom reinforcement, we continue this reinforcement to the across the say, joint, across the beam. So what happens? Most of the time, even if you don't do this calculation, Still, the, the section will be okay. But uh, if the flow is heavily loaded, then they recommend doing this calculation and checking whether the beam has a problem. So I'll show you where you can find this information on your code. Now torsion is over, punching, then you get punching. It comes before uh, torsion.
ليوه what it says is they can be problems along this beam uh, slab junction but in a typical uh, reinforced concrete slab this will not be a major problem at all but then that case where could this be the problem now you look at this diagram just turn it by 180 degrees what do you get inverted t foundation the inverted t foundations are heavily loaded these slabs are very lightly loaded so in the case of inverted t type foundations you might have to check for this particular condition. but to check you need a bending moment diagram and then uh, check it and uh, the transfer reinforcement requirement is given by this particular equation and we'll again look at an example just to learn what has been done, right? Because uh, the code covers up to this point with different values. The important thing that you have to keep in mind is for this particular shear, the critical shear starts from 26.5 degrees up to 40. So here you can see cot theta varies from 1 to 2.5, the 2.0. Can you remember earlier it was 2.47? Now it is uh, 2, right? Is that right, Madhugo? Yeah. Can you remember the yes. angle was uh, uh, 22 to 45? Yes. But for this, for this particular shear, it is 26.5 to 45. So you get shear. Along this particular surface. Can you see? Diagram is very clear. It's a diagram given in the code. And what happens? Can you see this force FD? What is the force here? FD plus delta FD. So what happens? This side has having more force than this side. So you can't have equilibrium. It might break. So we have to make sure there's additional precaution to assure that this. Uh, this uh, flange will remain intact with the web. Otherwise, if it attacks, flange will separate, the moment carrying capacity of the beam will drop drastically. Is that clear? Yes, yes, sir. Right, okay. So we'll have a, look at, we'll have a quick look at the example. I'm going to share the screen now. Somewhere in this note, one example was given. So these are all that you use to study about concrete, how to record concrete, flexure, then shear, we all learned a lot about this. So this design for shear. The design example. So, if somebody goes through this uh, knot, you can learn a lot. So, there are design examples as well. 
There's one small mistake in one of these equations, but I uh, showed the place. Today we'll skip it. And then uh, how to find the minimum re reinforcement of links and so on. Now here you cut this particular example. And the transit shear reinforcement is given by this equation. And to prevent crushing of the compression struts in the flange, it says VED should be less than a particular value that we can check. And the minimum angle would be 26.5. So then, then it talks about the equation 6.21. And that is this equation. So this example is given. And you, we are supposed to find the shear at this particular phase over quarter of the distance of the Beam. It's quarter the distance of uh, quarter the span of the beam. So we just look at it. That is just to find the reinforcement. Now we can see some complicated calculation. What is the meaning of that? So I'll, I'll stop share, then I can explain it. So we have a beam, plant beam. So on this side, if at force FD, so FD1, and we are going to get the failure at this particular interface. So what the court says is, many moment diagram goes like this. These two quarter points, will experience a lesser change in moment. So if the beam is failed to fail, it will fail here or it will fail here. It will not fail. Here. So it goes well with the shear requirement as well. So this L by 4. And what it says is find the this bending moment. So that complicated calculation we have seen is just to find the bending moment variation. So I'll share again. So the change in moment is 149. Then you can find the force is D minus HF by 2, the lever arm. And then uh, that particular example has uh, flanges on both sides. So you have to find what is the exact force. And the exact force has been found as 96 kilonewtons. If you just look at it carefully, the self-explanatory, everything is given. Then you calculate the stress, 0.43, and it says, if the stress is low enough, you don't have to do anything. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's checked for crushing of the compression start, 26.5 degree angle. So VED max is 5.4 greater than 0.43. So there's, we don't have a problem. Then again, uh, there's a minimum value given in uh, 
the table, it says if the stress 0.43 is less than a certain value, you don't have to worry. So what actually happens is, in most of the cases, with the, because we are in situ casting, we are providing slab bottom reinforcement across this interface. We are providing taps, slab top reinforcement across this, across the beam. So we have this common interface between uh, the, the flange and the web. So that is a common area. And if it is going to fail, the stress should be large enough. So here what has happened is stress is too so small. That is not going to fail even if you don't provide any reinforcement. So that's what you generally find. But in case of inverter T beams that we use for foundations, this failure can happen. So it's not a situation for general straps. Straps you are supposed to check, but generally when you check for a, for a strap, strap will be okay. If that is the case again, what is the solution? Better write a spreadsheet so that you know the automatically this will be checked because this is just a useless calculation for most of the slabs. But you have to get the get these moments fed. But when you have a bending moment diagram, you can easily feel the moment. You don't have to do this complicated calculation as you are here to find the variation in moment. So you don't have to do any of these things because these are manual calculations. Uh, from the sub 2000 uh, bending moment diagram, you can straight away find what is the change in bending moment, and from that, you can work out what is the change in force. And when you know the change in force, you have to make sure that uh, the corresponding stress is low enough. If the corresponding loss is, stress is not low enough, you need to provide additional. Is that clear, one, Luca? Yes, that is clear, sir. That's clear. So this is not a uh, calculation that you often need to perform. But uh, we have, as engineers, we should be aware that, you know, these failures can occur. So when you are doing the detailing, we can be a little generous. That's the that's whole idea. Like, you know, uh, rather than uh, just stopping the reinforcement in the middle, we might uh, take it to the very end of the beam so that uh, each reinforcement has better anchorage so it, 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 each reinforcement will be geared to resist any stress that occur on the surface between the web and the flange. That's all. Okay. But in the case of inverted T-type foundation, because the foundations are designed for very high loads, you will find this particular violation is a significant one. So I will show you this uh, in a later day because when we, we might be talking about foundations one day. So we're on foundation note, I have a I have an example using this particular information. Okay, Banduka. With that, uh, yes, shall sir. we wind up for the, for today? Because I oh, think oh. now uh, time has come for us to actually move on to yes. uh, column columns and the whole building concept. Uh -huh. Okay, sir. Right. Because, you know, I just wanted to uh, create the background, good background, so that when I talk, most of the those who have participated will understand it 100%. Right? Yes. Okay, so, so now we have created the background. Now time is, uh, now I think uh, time is right for us to move to the real uh, uh, material <laughs> for the lecture, or the, the course, like, you know, lightweight hybrid multi-story construction. Okay. So, because now we are familiar with Eurocode, yes. then I can show how the Eurocode can be used for optimization. Oh, right? And how about the chat? Yeah, one question is there. Uh, sir, could you please explain about shear enhancement near supports in short spans? Ah, oh, right, right. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. Right. So what happens is, What happens is, uh, when you have a beam, now this is for something that is found experimentally. Let's say we have a cobalt stone. 
we apply a load here. What is the failure plane? Very high angle. So the court says two things. When you are designing for shear, this is a beam. It says because here to create a failure, the angle is very high. So this it has significant enhancement. So because of that reason, it says, don't check shear here. Check the shear D away from the face of the support. Check the shear D away from the face of the support. Whatever the links that you get here, provide the same links up to the support. Is that clear, Vanduka? Because of yes, this enhancement, is. we are taking D away. Uh -huh. Okay? Only because of this enhancement, because at the very close to the support, you can't get shear failures. Got it? Mm -hmm. Yes, got it. Sir. So what we do is, we provide, we check at D away. And when you are checking D away, this is center line. This is the face of the support. This is D away. So this bending moment diagram is, you know, you find there's a substantial difference between these two gear forces. So why we check D away is because of this enhancement. Then it says, if you are going to consider the enhancement, then you have to consider it has some support here. And this is AV. 2D over AV is the enhancement possible. So the way Eurocode hand handles it is find the stress here divided by 2D over AV and make sure that, that you design for that particular shear stress. Now where are we going to use it? Now let's say we have a pipe. We have pile cap. We have these piles. So we have to check this section. And this is very tall. So it's here in between. So we say when you are checking, use the enhancement. But the enhancement or whatever uh, reduction is four times, is limited to four. Otherwise, you know, if, if the section is very close to this one, 2D over AV. If AV is very small, you can get uh, 12 times increase or 15 times increase or 20 times increase. But the court says the increase is limited to four times the shear stress. So what is the shear stress of concrete? Something like 0.4 for thick sections. So this can be enhanced by four times, so it will go up to about 1.6. So instead of using the shear capacity as 0 0.6, 0 0.4, you will be able to say the shear capacity is about 1.6. So that's how we make sure pile caps do not fail in punching shear. Why pile caps are so thick? We have a rule for the pile cap. What is the rule? The thickness of the pile cap should be, if this is D, this is D, half D by 2. It should be very thick, should be D by 2. So my rule is D by 2 plus 600. So when the pile cap is so thick, can it fail in punches here? No. So we have rules of thumb like that. We don't use thick, thin pile caps. Always we make sure pile cap is the distance between two piles divided by two. Plus 300 millimeters or 600 millimeters. 
Have I answered the question, Panduka? Yes, sir. Uh, it is clear now. Because whenever you get here, you know, so if you look at a pie, uh, example on pile cap, you will see, see that you know this particular 2D over AV rule is uh, has been used. But you can't find any other place where any example that 2D over AV has been used. Any textbook? The only place you can find 2D over AV rule being used is uh, either cobblestone design or the pile cap design. In pile cap design, you had used 2D over AV rule. Is that clear? Yes, that's clear. Right. So no, no, no place in the in a any example you can't find it. So basically, we are not using 2D OAV rule under normal situations. But we use 2D OAV rule when you are designing pile caps. But we are actually using this rule. That's why you know we check D O V. Were you aware that you know why we check D O V when you are checking the shear? Earlier, Banduga? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, earlier. so that is 2D O A V rule, right? Yeah. 2D O A V rule, because there's an enhancement very close to the support. We check shear D away from the So this uh, 2D O A V rule, uh, we also uh, uh, using embankment uh, pile cap designs. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's right. So in highway engineers, use it often. Yes. But building engineers hardly use it. They uh -huh. use it without knowing. So that means they, they check at the face. Not, they don't check here at the face of the support. They check here. D away from the face of the support because of this 2D rule. 2D OAB rule. Okay, Bandhuka? Yes. Okay, sir. All right. And... Um... So any other question? Mm -hmm. That's all questions for today, I think. So, so today, what is the time? 8.25. I think uh, yeah. we can stop and next time we'll uh, go move deeper into the the concepts on cost effectiveness. Yeah, and also, sir, um, we are having discussions uh, in issuing a participation certificate uh, for this lecture series as discussed with you. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. So, so uh, what we discussed was uh, for participants to offer a certificate uh, the, the to use it in five slots. So every five slots, uh, a, a course will be in five slots. So mm -hmm. a course component will be in five slots. So if, you, mm -hmm. if anybody attending all five slots or five to six slots, uh, we need little flexibility. Uh, they get a certificate for that part. Is that right, the Bandhu? Yeah, that's what we discussed. Uh, yeah. So so yeah. that way, you know, you'll be able to collect a number of certificates, but, uh, you know, you don't have to attend the whole course. So if every time you attend five or six continuously, no absenteeism in between, then uh, our course modules will be five, six, seven range. So generally, a uh, course module will be five, six, seven more range. So uh, when you attend all those, then we say, okay, now you are qualified for one certificate. So that's the way that we thought of adopting. Uh, so Banduka will coordinate that. Yes, so sir. you will can, you can work out the necessary details, Banduka. Yes, yes, sir. I will discuss it. Uh, so then you can uh, have, a, have a note like our advertisement for course. Yes. You'd better have an ad additional advertisement saying yes, that yes. you know we are we are having this particular arrangement, which can be yes. used as uh, evidence of you know anybody participating. All all the courses will will okay. be entitled for uh, course modules, and module yes. will be five to six or seven lectures, right? Okay. okay, you don't have to come for the whole course, but you can participate in parts. Whatever you are interesting for you, you can participate and yes. uh, receive a certificate. Okay, sir. okay, okay sir. and also uh, our uh, vice president, I use engineer Mrs. Kamala Guna has joined. Uh, over to you, madam, for the photo.
Hey, Bandhu, I couldn't hear you properly, but I think I am supposed to do the vote of thanks now. Is it correct? Correct, correct, madam. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank, yeah, you, thank you, Banduka. I am happy to deliver this sort of thanks actually at the end of this impressive lecture. And this is the 10th lecture for the session, which is remarkable output from you, Professor. Yes. I believe that you, you. this is a very effective lecture series together with the interesting and worthy lectures you delivered today and all these year, two years, like uh, continuously. Thank you very yeah. much, Professor, for your. Uh, intensive and your 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 uh, share your knowledge and your sacrifice your recreation time so thank you so much dear participants i hope you are very much thankful to our esteemed resource person for this enthusiastic presentation which you could grab much out of his lectures so uh, as some of your professional development it refreshing the theory and Go ahead with this lecture series. So let me let me thank behalf of you as well, right? To Professor. Uh, also, there's a team behind this screen, and let me thank uh, them as well. First of all, I thank uh, Chairman Civil Engineer Sectional Committee, Engineer Mangal Silva, and Engineer Banduka for your efficient coordination and updating every each and every lecture in the YouTube. And your timely reminders. So those are great, actually. Thank you so much. I extend my sincere thanks to the uh, participants. If you all are not here, this lecture won't be. A, it should be. Yeah. So you, because of your attendance, this is very impressive. And thank you so much for your uh, attendance. Though you are grabbing a lot of important things and you are taking home and you are developing your career. But still, I thank you so much for attending. Also, I thank the IT team and secretariat and all the support given by the uh, Institution of Indian Sri Lanka. So, thank you everyone and hope you will have a great day and wish you a good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you.